Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to take a look at the wrap widget. As the name suggests, the wrap widget allows you to wrap content over multiple lines when the content overflows either the width or height of its parent container. You'll notice here that we have a home page with a scaffold. The scaffold contains an app bar which you can see at the top of the application. And what we're going to do is we're going to give our scaffold a body. And the body is going to contain a, a sized box which will be expanded to fill the width and height of the scaffold body. And inside this sized box we will create our wrap widget. Now the wrap widget takes a list of uh, child widgets. So we're going to populate it with a few cards. The first card there will be a red colour and we will give it a fixed width and height container for the purposes of this demonstration of 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. We will then copy and paste this card a few times and we'll create a green card and a blue card like so. If I then save that, you'll notice after the app is hot reloaded, we can see those three cards arranged in the wrap widget. Now by default, the direction of the wrap widget, this second property here, by default is set to horizontal, which means the widgets are aligned from left to right. However, this is something you can change by specifying either axes vertical or horizontal. So currently it's set to horizontal, but you can change it to vertical. And you'll notice that essentially those child cards then flow from top to bottom inside the wrap widget. Changing the direction back to horizontal as if it was a row we then have a look at some of the other properties available to us, which are alignment, spacing, run alignment, run spacing, amongst some of the other properties. So the alignment property allows you to specify how the children will be aligned inside the wrap widget. So if we specify a wrap alignment of center, you'll notice that the children are then wrapped centrally aligned inside that wrap widget. Now if we adjust the width of one of these cards, for example if we make this blue card 150 pixels wide, you'll notice that the widgets are still centra center aligned inside the wrap widget. However if we increase the width there to 200, you'll notice how it flows onto the next line However, the widget still remains center aligned inside the wrap widget. Changing other alignment options, including the center, space between, space evenly, space around, start and end. You'll notice that aligning them to the end will align them to the right hand side in a horizontal layout. Start is the default, which aligns to the left hand side. And finally, the space between, space evenly, and space around are similar to the equivalent flex properties coming from a web development background. You can see that space between puts a gap between each of the left and rightmost uh, widgets in this example. Space around will put a gap around the widgets on the left and right hand side. And finally, space evenly will put an even amount of space to the left and right of each of the child widgets inside the wrap widget. You'll notice how these spacing and other alignment options affect the different rows differently depending on how many children are in each of the rows. Now, the other options that you have available to you include spacing. Now, this allows you to specify an amount of spacing between each one of the child widgets. So for example if we specify the spacing to 20 
and to make it more visible we've changed the alignment to centre aligned. You'll notice how we have a spacing of 20 between the two widgets. Likewise we can increase that spacing to 40 and you'll notice the gap between the widgets increases. Putting the spacing back down to 20 you'll also notice that there are other two properties available called run alignment and run spacing. Now as I was referring to these rows if you like, the naming convention that Flutter uses for that concept is known as runs. So this here is the first run and this here is the second run. So what we can specify is the run alignment and this allows you to specify how the runs are aligned inside the uh, wrap widget. So what we can do is specify wrap alignment.center and you'll notice how the runs are then centered inside the wrap widget. You'll recall earlier that we use an expanded sized box, meaning that the wrap widget fills up the entire width and height of the scaffold's body. This means that by default, with the run alignment of start, the widgets will appear at the top of the page. With a run alignment of center, the widgets will appear in the center of the page. And then finally with a run alignment of end, the widgets will appear at the bottom of the page. Likewise, much the same as the alignment property, you have a number of other options such as space evenly, space between and space around. For example, space evenly, much the same as the alignment property, will space the widgets out in each of their runs with an even amount of spacing between each of the runs, with this being the first run and this being the second run. Last but not least, if we change that space evenly back to centre to make this next demonstration more prominent, you can customise the run spacing. Now this run spacing is the amount of space between each of the runs or rows in this example. You'll notice how with a run spacing of 40, the space in between each of the rows is double the amount of space between each of the child widgets inside the row. You can fully customise these values and increase or decrease them as necessary. So essentially the wrap widget allows you to specify a number of child widgets and the child widgets will automatically wrap based on the width and height of their parent container, meaning that you can avoid the overflow errors when you have widgets that will overflow off the either width or height of the page. I hope this has proven useful. Thank you very much for watching.